My topic tonight is dumb matter. In a previous episode, I spoke about the child's hierarchy, how a child might come to see the world as composed of inanimate matter like walls, tables, chairs, and above that, dolls are matter, but they have personality, and above that, living beings, animals, children, adults. A parent who uh, knows everything and can do everything, at least when the child is young. When they get older, they realize the parent doesn't know everything and can't do everything. But it's easy then to imagine a super parent, a God, who knows everything and can do everything. And so we have God at one end of the hierarchy and matter at the other end. Matter is just dirt, just stuff. And a few centuries ago, a, a medieval peasant, let's say, might have seen not much potential in matter. I mean, the the world they lived in, well, they knew where wood uh, ca came from to make the oak. They knew where the, the wool came from to make their clothes. They might, they might have seen a little wonder in the world. Maybe wonder in the fact that plants grew. Maybe wonder in the fact that, well, where do metals come from? Where does gold come from? Uh, where does glass come from? But their world, I think, they didn't probably see much potential and their world was small. They lived in a a small world covered by a dome where stars peeked through. And I think most wonder uh, was associated with the next world, that that's where the glory and the mystery and the depth was. That's where God was above the clouds looking down on us. And in this world, where I live, I can take a walk in the woods, and I see what I was just talking about, wood, rocks, dirt, but I don't see where we get the materials to make cars, or jet planes, or PCs, or cell phones, and yet we do. We are making matter act in more and more complex, intelligent ways. Here's something that can remember all the works of Shakespeare and maybe a hundred other authors. I, I saw this recently. Even water has its mysteries and secrets. A GPS satellite actually has to take into consideration Einstein's general relativity to do calculations and send out accurate signals. We have computers that can play chess and beat all of us almost. Maybe not a grandmaster all the time, but the computers are very good at it. Maybe someday there'll be robots that can function pretty much as human beings and do much of what we can do. Will we ever make conscious beings? We don't, we haven't solved the hard problem of consciousness. We don't know what consciousness is. And it's conceivable that someday some machine we make does achieve consciousness. Maybe not. But we know that matter can become conscious because we are conscious. Now, in the past, it might have been thought that we were what we were because of a divine soul, a spiritual soul. The idea was dualism. The idea was, well, the soul informs matter, and matter of itself is dumb and lifeless, but the soul somehow gives it life. However, here are the most abundant elements in the universe in order. Hydrogen, helium, then oxygen, then carbon, then nitrogen. Now, helium is a noble gas, and it doesn't combine, or at least not very easily, to make compounds. If we remove helium, the most abundant elements in the human body in descending order match, aside from helium. The idea here is we didn't come into the universe, we came out of the universe. And as we look into matter, we find more and more unknown worlds. We, we look down deep and we find things that we didn't, we didn't even know existed. All the microscopic animals that you can't see unless you put them under a microscope. We've, we've seen the, 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 um, how, how the atoms of a crystal are aligned, something like this. We've, we've understood the atom, and we've, we've just discovered worlds that were inconceivable at one time, that they didn't know, we didn't know existed. Here's the elements. Here's um, a standard picture of the atom. 
Here is what the electron's, quote, orbit looks like around hydrogen, when hydrogen is at different energy levels. And if we go outward, we're not living under a dome. We're living in an infinitely large universe. The Earth is just one small planet in a huge galaxy in a huge universe. And this, I believe, is the Hubble Deep Space Deep Field Photograph. It's a famous photograph because they tried to point the Hubble at a patch of sky that seemed completely dark and void of uh, stars. And I'm, if I remember correctly, if you hold a pinhead at arm's length, that was the size of the patch of sky that they looked at. And what they found were stars and galaxies. Matter is far from dumb. It's, it has secrets. It's, it's amazingly complex. And the idea of God existing outside of the universe and as a person seems to me not a very, it doesn't seem to agree with what we're finding. Which leads me to the topic of the supernatural. As I said in a, another clip, the supernatural is a concept with no footing, no foundation. We have no way of knowing if whatever we see, what it might experience, is in fact supernatural because we don't know the limits of the natural world. We don't know what the natural world can do yet. And uh, there are things we can do today quite easily that would have been called supernatural. Uh, if my cell phone is on voice activation, I can say, call Aunt Sally, and I can be speaking to Aunt Sally within 10 seconds, even if she's on the other side of the earth. We can do so much that a few centuries ago would have been declared supernatural. And we don't know the limits of the natural world. And it occurs to me that if a super, if an objective truth exists about the supernatural world, then why haven't we found it for all these centuries? Why do we have different scriptures or even different interpretations of the same scriptures where people don't agree about the, the most elementary facts of the of this so-called supernatural world is there a heaven or a hell do people go to heaven or do people go to hell forever or not christians can't agree on that and then there's reincarnation and there's all sorts of other ideas and we have these scriptures but we have no way no epistemological method of arriving at a common truth we have this scripture well, even in Christianity, but then if we go outside of Christianity, we have all these competing, contradictory scriptures. And, as I said, if the supernatural exists, then why, after all these centuries, haven't we, why do we have these different stories that disagree? Why haven't we been able to, to discover an objective truth? I suspect that perhaps the supernatural doesn't agree, but that the natural world if we look deeply into it, is in a sense supernatural. It has wonders and mysteries that just go on and on. And if we can't consolidate the world's scriptures, maybe we kind of have to start over again and put them aside and try to uh, approach what used to be called supernatural and a more scientific spirit. And maybe that's what I'm trying to do with this series in natural theology. Thank you.